I don't know, this whole men's ministry versus youth entertainment. <laughs> Who are we going to entertain? I mean, we just want to win. <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Get some Tylenol from me or something. You guys excited today? Yes. I'm really excited by today's word. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, would you guys close your eyes? We're going to say a little prayer right now. Father, we thank you for your love. Open our hearts, open our ears to receive your word. Let it just leave a major impact on us. Um, and we thank you for this time to, that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I noticed that we don't have Sunday school, so my audience includes first through fifth grades today. So I, I got I to gotta keep you guys all entertained. But I, I think God has a good sense of humor because this message is designed for an 8-year-old and for a 50-year-old to just receive it. Any, any foodies? Food, foodies people here? I actually never knew that's an, an official term. It, it means that you're particularly interested in food. I, I was like, wow, that's, that's an actual term. So I'm going to be referencing a lot of food today. As you can tell, I'm very experienced with it. <laughs> but I'm excited for what God's going to do. All right. You might be thinking, where did he get Chick-fil-A on Sunday? When you volunteer at City Hill, you have special access. <laughs> False. Fake news. Uh, I got it yesterday. All right. So let's see what we got here. Ooh, we got some chicken. Woo! Beautiful chicken, perfectly crisp, perfect color of brown, juicy, probably yesterday. Some famous Chick-fil-A chicken. Very delicious. Very good. But I would say this meal on its own, it's probably like a 6 out of 10, maybe a 7 out of 10 on its own. I didn't forget you vegans. Got a salad. This meal on its own, I mean, it's a salad, probably like a five out of ten. But you know what, what you can do to make this meal into a ten out of ten? What is it? What do you guys think? Sauces. Look at that. It's the sauces. Look at this. They got all of these sauces at Chick fil A. We got barbecue, honey mustard, ranch. It's the sauces that elevate this food from a 6 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 meal. Woo! We love our sauces, though. My year and a half old son, he actually will use the same piece of fry or same piece of chicken to eat all the sauce. <laughs> that fry lasts forever, right? The same principle applies with our spiritual food. Ooh, the same principle applies with our spiritual food. You'll see where I'm going in, in, in a few minutes. The topic of today's sermon is called the secret sauce. Where am I going with all this? Picture. I sit with my wife probably like what, row second, third, every Sunday. We have usually the same people around us. It's the same building. Pastor Paul is, you know, running back and forth, preaching the revelation after revelation. I think at one point he had a towel to wipe his head because he was sweating so much. Just Holy Spirit driven. Radomir is here going back and forth, filled with the Holy Spirit. Me and my wife, we get into the car. And usually what we do after every Sunday is we say, hey, how do you like service? Like, what did you get out of service? You know, what did you receive? And I say, you know what? That service was like a 6 out of 10. You know, it was okay. Kind of like average, not too bad. My wife, on the other hand, she's like, what are you talking about? That service blew my mind. The revelation I got, the experience I got, the Holy Spirit-driven message that I received. Same building, same worship team, same ushers, same people around us, same air control. Everything's the same, but we have different revelations. We have different perspectives of what we just received from the pastor. How about when it comes to reading scripture? How about when it comes to reading scripture? I'll read chap Matthew chapter 1. My wife will read chapter 20, Matthew chapter 1. 
She's like, you know what, it's okay. There's a lot of genealogy stuff that's boring. And, you know, Jesus was born from Mary. I mean, the chapter doesn't have much. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The ge- look at the genealogy from Abraham to David to Jesus, how everything happens for a reason. Look at Jesus, born from Mary with the Holy Spirit. That's why he's fully human, fully God. Fully human because of Mary, fully God because of the Spirit. Same chapter, same version of the Bible, different perspectives, different revelations. You can physically starve to death even if your fridge is fully stocked. You can physically starve to death if your fridge is stocked, fully stocked. You know why? Because you have to be intentional. You have to go to the fridge. You have to open it. You have to unwrap, unpack. You might have to cut some stuff up, put it in the grill, put it in the oven. There's, there's a process to do it. Same applies to your spiritual food. This is your spiritual refrigerator. If you just carry it here or have an app, you know what? Even if you just go to Sunday and to service, it doesn't mean you're spiritually alive. It doesn't mean you're spiritually mature. You have to open this, unwrap it, unpack it. You might have to cut some stuff out of your life in order for this to apply. There's so much here. There's so much goodness here. But when we read the word and we're like, yeah, I don't know, scripture's kind of boring. Unless you start dipping it into some secret sauce. There's always some secret sauce. The spoon, the spoon, (laughs) the church is not here to spoon feed you Monday through Sunday. What happens is on Sunday, we'll make a meal, we'll present it, and it's up to you to take it and to receive it. You might take a little to-go box home, to ponder on, but guess what? Most of us are going to be hungry by dinner time. On Monday, you are still hungry. That's when you open the refrigerator, the spiritual refrigerator, and you just indulge in the Word of God. A couple passages I want to read is Hebrews 5, chapter 5, verse 13 through 14. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquitted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by con- constant use have trained themselves to distinguish, distinguish good from evil. It's kind of hard to dip milk into sauce. Next verse, John 6, chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. The devil wants us to restrict our access to the refrigerator. He has placed a lot of lies into our head. Even I've fallen for. Trust me, this, this message is for me personally. Have you ever heard the lie that... Every time I read scripture, I don't remember anything. Anyone? Right? You read a chapter, then two hours later, you're like, oh, what did I just read in that book? I don't remember what I read in that book. Or the next day, you're like, what's the verse that that would have really helped me with, with this argument right now? I bet most of you don't remember what you ate Tuesday for lunch. But you know that it was nutritional for you. You know it is exactly what your body needed. It was exactly the nutrients you needed. It was exactly what kept you from being dehydrated, but you don't remember. That is the same thing with the Word of God. It is powerful. It is exactly what you need for that moment. The more you indulge, the more you will start remembering. Don't let the devil put that thought in your mind. The second lie that I've, this, this one actually affects me quite a bit. Every time I read scripture, I fall asleep. Actually, there was a season in my life where it was like 11, 12 p.m. I couldn't fall asleep. I'm like, I'm going to read some word. 
and I'm going to have a good night's sleep. But that convicted me, right? That convicted me. I'm like, like I'm using scripture to fall asleep. It's, that's not the intent of the scripture. Who in here has kids? Kids? Being a father of four, whenever one of my child falls asleep in my hands or on my chest, woo, it is the most precious moment. It is the most sacred moment for me because it's like I know my child is at rest. I know my child is pain-free. My child is worry-free. My child feels safe. That's exactly how God feels when we fall asleep on his word. When he, he's like, my son, the last thing that your eyes saw before you fell asleep was my words and was my commandments. He's like, wow, you're just worry-free. You're in peace. It says the, right, the kingdom of heaven is what? Peace, uh, righteousness, and joy. And you just have this peace. You have this ultimate, ultimate peace. So let the devil not try to mess with you. Don't let him use you in conviction or guilt about to stay away from the refrigerator. About two years ago, I was on this mission to find the nature of, of our father. What is he like? What does he think like? What is he, how does he act towards situation? You know, what does he think about those ripped jeans? What is, what is his motive? What is, he, what is he all about? And the answer actually came a lot easier than I expected. In John chapter 5, verse 19, John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing, and whatever the Father does, the Son also does. In another verse, in, uh, in John, I think 19 or something, it says that, he, that I only say what I hear the Father say. You want to know the nature of the Father? Start reading about Jesus. About the first four Gospels. Did he say anything about ripped jeans? Well, maybe that's his thought on it then. What do you think? We're going to return now to the sauces. So the sauces elevate the meal, Correct. She dipped into, into sauce at, at service, elevated it. I dipped, I dipped it when I read, it elevated. But there's also the sauce that the devil provides, because he's a copycat. Moses went to Pharaoh, and they, were about, they, they could do almost everything, like exactly what, Pharaoh could, uh, what Moses could do, because they have the devil on, on their side, but not exactly everything. So he develops his own sauces as well. But his sauces come with a price. There's always a price. We're going to get a little bit more into it um, here in a second. So the first sauce, we're going to talk about three sauces. There's a lot of sauces. I mean, there's, there's joy, peace, forgiveness, kindness. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can dip scripture into to elevate it. We can dip a sermon into and elevate it. The first one is faith. When Pastor Paul was talking about money and faith, I was like, man, that's like half my sermon right there. Faith is defined in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. 2 Corinthians 5.7 says, We live by faith and not by... Abraham was considered the father of... One of the stories that really kind of you know, took me kind of nudged on my heart. In Genesis 15, Abraham has a lot of stuff, right? He has, you know, all these boats, yachts, rentals. I mean, he has a lot of stuff going on for him. And he's like, God, like, what, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Who am I going to leave it to? Maybe I should leave it to my chief assistant. I don't remember whatever his name was. But God says, no. Someone out of your blood and out of your flesh will be your heir. Okay. I mean, you know, Abraham took it. That's awesome. Fast forward. We have Genesis chapter 22. Isaac is born. God comes to him and says, Abraham, take your only son, your only son, go on the mountain and, and sacrifice him to me. So what does Abraham do with the promise of God? He has a promise. It's his choice. I can dip it into some fear or doubt, which comes with a cost. I can dip it in some faith. And, and, and 
you know, have full faith on God, or I can do nothing with it. Maybe I should go to God and be like, what are you talking about? You, this is my only son. You promised this. But no, he dipped it into faith. As he's walking towards the mountain, let's read uh, Genesis 22, 5. So he brought two servants with him, and then he said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and we will come back to you. What? Who's going to come back to you? We. That's not singular, right? That's plural. When he dipped it into faith, that's the only thing he stood on was faith. He's like, I know what God promised me who will be my heir so I know that God will provide and so we will come back I would think he would say you know what and I'll be back after we worship I'll be back because you know maybe God will take my son no he's a father of faith he dipped it into faith and saw an outcome how about David and Goliath uh, can we get first Samuel 17 37 David and Goliath Right? Goliath is, you know, saying, you know, all you guys, Israelites, you guys are weak, come against me, fight. David comes up, goes to King Saul, and what does he say? He says, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistines. What? He took the promise of God, he took what God has done for him, and he dipped it in faith. He could have dipped it in fear and bounced. And who knows what would the outcome of Israelites be? Four friends and the paralyzed. Four friends came with a paralyzed friend. Church was packed. Well, let's say the house was packed. They could have been like, well, you know, if it was God's will, I, I, I would have, you know, this, this whole hallway would have been free for me to walk up front. You know, if it's God's will, no one would have been here and Jesus would have walked to me. No, that's not what they, what they do. They go up on the roof. They dip the promise of God that he's a healer. They dipped it into faith. They cut the hole, lowered it. What did Jesus say? Mark 2, chapter 2, verse 5. When Jesus saw their... He said to the paralyzed, now uh, some of your sin or sins are forgiven. And then he got up and walked. It was the faith that they dipped in. The woman bleeding for 12 years... When she heard that Jesus is a healer, she took it and dipped it in faith. She could have dipped it in doubt and be like, well, it's been 12 years. You know, I guess this is my calling for life is to be always bleeding. But no, what does Jesus say? Daughter, your faith has healed you. So we open scripture. Say, you know, what is it? Mark 16. It says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover what do you do with that verse so it says they shall recover you have an option i can close the book and be like wow wow yeah that's that's awesome great great on to the next read you could dip it in fear right you could say well what if they don't recover then where's this god you could dip it in doubt and be like yeah i i doubt it doesn't say let the anointing ones lay their hands let the sinless lay their hands it just says lay your hands and they shall recover what if we dip it in faith? I'm, I'm not a healer. Our leadership, our team here, we're not healers. But we know a healer. He lives in us. What really helped me with faith was that I realized that the burden to produce or the burden to um, act upon was on him. My job is to lay hands. His job is to heal. If you're not healed... Talk to the big man upstairs. Like, who am I to question what he wants to do? Who am I? My job is to heal, to pray, or to pray, to lay hands, to cast out demons, but his job is to perform. When we realize that our faith is not that I can do it, but it's that it's the, his, his responsibility, our mind shifts. Let me help you build some faith right now. Revelations 19.10 says, It is the spirit of prophecy who bears the testimony of Jesus. 
It is the spirit of prophecy who bears the testimony of Jesus. Which means what Jesus did before, he will do it again. It's in scripture. We can stand, we can dip in that scripture that what he did before. Let's try it out. Who has God released from alcoholism? One person from alcohol. Anyone? There we go. We got one. That's all we need. Based on what God did in his life, he can do it to your husband, to your brother, to anyone around you. He can release based on that. Who has God, whose marriage has God restored? Anybody? Whose marriage has God restored? All right, not today then, huh? Who has God set from pornography? Right here. I'll, I'll, I'll raise my hands. We've got plenty of hands. Based on that, based on that, he will do it again. We need to take the word of God, dip it into faith because he's already done it before. John 8, 36 says, scripture says, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So that was faith. Second sauce. Hope. Woo-wee. Hope means confident expectation of what God has promised and its, strength and, and its strength is in the faithfulness. Hope and faith are very similar. But faith is more in the moment. Hope is kind of more long term. We're going to go through some stories in the Bible where people dipped it into hope and saw, and saw uh, restorations. Story of Job. Story of Job. Satan meets with, with, with God, and God says, well, I have this faithful, strong man of God. And he's like, well, let me, you know, let, let's see how strong he is. So Satan takes away his health, his wealth, and his kids. And kind of see, let's go, let's see what happens. Job did question. He was like, man, I, man, I don't know about this God. But you know what? His hope in Jesus ne or in God never went away. In Job 13, 15, it says, though he slay me, I will hope in him. God saw that the hope that Job had, and he restored him with double of everything. Double wealth, double health. He restored him with children. I'm not sure if it was the same wife, but he restored his completely. How about the story of Joseph? Joseph had two dreams. Then he gets thrown in a pen, sold into slavery. Then he's working on the Pharaoh. Then he goes back into prison. You would think the hope for those dreams, the hope for the promise of God would have been like, you know what, God? I think I'll take it from here. I can see that my hope in you is, is getting shattered. But he didn't. He still kept his hope and his gaze on God and we can see that the restoration that happened because of the hope that Joseph kept on holding on to. He saw what God's promise was. Story of Peter. Devoted disciple of Jesus. This one really kind of like, took an impact on me. I just didn't realize how you have Peter, you have Judas. One denied, one betrayed. One dipped it in hope and got restored. One dipped it in shame and committed suicide. Woo! What you dip it into matters. You have control of the sauces. You take the word and you dip it in there. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is... Can you get someone on the keys, please? Love. The third sauce is love. Cain and Abel, they both presented a gift to God, their first. But Cain's wasn't accepted. Abel's was accepted. At this point, Cain has, has a decision to do. Do I dip what wasn't accepted into hate? Or do I dip it into love? And as, as we can tell, he dipped it into hate. 
And what happened from that was murder, and then he was cursed with the sign. What if he would have dipped it in love? Have you ever thought about that? What if he would have never killed his brother? Who knows? He would, God would have used him mightily for his glory. Joseph and his brothers, again. So now he's the king of Egypt, or the second in command in Egypt. And the brothers come to him during the famine. He has a choice. He has this promise from God of those two dreams. And his brothers are right here. He could have dipped it in hate and put him in a pin, maybe sold him, killed him. He could have done a lot of things, but he dipped it into love. He dipped it into love, guys. Folks, I'm telling you, love is, is the greatest. If you have deep, deep love, everything around us will change. 1 John 3.18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. In actions and in truth. The thing about the love sauce, it sounds like a Valentine's giveaway, the love sauce is that there has to be action and truth. In Ephesians, it says, husbands, love your wives. What are you gonna dip that into? If you're gonna dip it into love, there better be action and truth behind it. If you're gonna dip it into, uh, how about nothing? How about we just say the words, babe, I love you, but you're still a jerk, and you're still not showing a love, you're not using the love correctly. When you dip it into love, there will always be action and there will always, always be truth. Mark 12 says, love your neighbors as yourself. I'm telling you guys, when we start reading scripture or sermons with these sauces that God has available to us, it will elevate, it will elevate this book so much more. So much more. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God took mankind and he dipped it into love. And he, there was an action. He gave his son. He didn't say, I love these people and then let us die in sin. No, there was a truth and an action that he followed through with. Hallelujah, Jesus. Today I want to ask you this question. What are you going to dip today's message in? How are you going to make this 6 out of 10 message into a 10 out of 10 message? Sometimes when we are in bondage, it's hard to find a good sauce. When we are in darkness, when we are imprisoned, when we have addictions, it's hard to, to dip into, into the good sauce. In, in, in the book of John, there's John the Baptist. He does, the, he does a, a testimony. He's like, when I baptized Jesus, I saw the heavens open. I saw the Holy Spirit like the dove descend. And then I heard God say, this is the one that will baptize in the Holy Spirit. Awesome. I mean, you would think that would last forever. Then we read in, book, in, in, the, uh, in the, the book of Matthew... John is in prison. He is alone. He's chained up. He's in darkness. And he sends his disciples to Jesus. And what do they ask? They're like, are you the real deal? Are you the real deal? He started dipping the image of Jesus from faith and hope into doubt. You would think Jesus would be like, you know what? If you're questioning my authority, if you're questioning my calling... If you're questioning the Son of God, maybe you deserve prison. But that's not what he says. This is, this is mind-blowing. Uh, if I can get Matthew 11, 11. A few verses down, he actually says, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. He dipped it into love and honor. He says, you know what, John? All the prophets before you, Elisha, Elijah, what is it, Jeremiah, I mean, all the prophets, you are greater than them. Just because you are in darkness and chains doesn't disqualify of what your calling has been. God is so, so good. He says, I love you, John. And you know what he says later, the last part? 
He says, and whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That's us. That's us. He has called us greater. Some of us are in chains, in bondages, in darknesses. And we feel the shame. We are we're deep in everything in anxiety and shame and depression and suicide. But God is saying, you are greater than John the Baptist. You are greater than all the prophets in the Old Testament because of the new covenant that I have made with you. Because of the resurrection. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Today I want to ask you, examine yourself. Examine yourself. What are you dipping the word of God into? What are you dipping the sermons into? Maybe you've run out of sauces. You know when you go to Chick-fil-A and you're eating and you run out of sauces, what do you do? You get up, you go to the counter and you ask. Woo! God said, ask and it shall be given to you. He's a good, good father who gives good gifts. Would you guys rise up with me? This book can be boring to read if you don't dip it in the, in the right sauces. If you take it for face value, you'll have a face value meal. But when you start dipping this into the faith, into hope, joy, kindness, love, this will be a meal that you will always be after. You will always want to spend time in this word because there is something so good. When your favorite steak place, you just can't wait to go to your favorite steak place because it's so delicious. When you start dipping this, you will experience the best meal, the goodness of God forever. Hey, thank you for watching City Hill Church YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss when we go live or post new content. Make sure to leave a comment about what spoke to you, where you're watching from, and how can we pray for you. And if you would like to support the ministry, you can give right on our website at cityhillchurch.org and help us keep reaching people for Jesus. Thank you and be blessed.